This is our regular Board of Selectmen meeting for October 26th, 2020. Let's call the meeting to order and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We'll um, begin tonight with public audience. And in this uh, Zoom world we're in, we continue to have uh, two ways to participate. You can uh, register in advance and, uh, and join the, the Zoom meeting and uh, speak to us for a five minute time period. Uh, to do that, you can email Tom Fitzgerald, T Fitzgerald at simsbury-ct.gov, or you can continue to email your uh, letters and your emails and we'll read them into the record. And you can send them to our town clerk, Erica Butler at ebutler at simsbury-ct.gov. We have a, a few emails. Uh, the first is from Helen Peterson. Thank you for the opportunity to address you regarding the draft Simsbury Parks and Open Space Master Plan. From the outset, specifically when referencing the stewardship of open space, this draft must acknowledge it is a living document. For this reason, particularly noting the reference documents of record and their dates as included in Appendix B, all such documents, as well as all appendices in general, must always be subject to periodic and purposeful updating in the context of new emerging science and information. I strongly suggest and ask our consultants how this can be addressed and appropriate language included as the draft goes forward. Could you please forward these comments to Weston and Sampson as well? Thank you, sincerely, Helen Peterson. All right, I believe I've got the next one, right, Eric? Yes, you do. All right, so uh, this one's from Joan Coe. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has an agenda item, Board of Selectmen Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, between the Simsbury Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager and the Police Commission. This memorandum is a result of Town Attorney Bob DiCrescenzo's interpretation of the law to reduce the authority of the Police Commission and increase the oversight to Town Manager Maria Capriola. The memorandum states, whereas generally, policy matters regarding the management of the Police Department, including police procedures and departmental rules and regulations are assigned to the Police Commission, while personnel administrative matters are assigned to the Chief of Police under the general supervision of the Town Manager. Police hiring and dismissal states, the parties further agree that other personnel functions within the department, in particular the day-to-day -day administration of personnel function, are to be conducted by the chief of police or the town manager's office. It appears that Mike Long and the police commission have become pencil pushers with no significant authority, and Police Chief Walter now reports that Town Manager Maria Capriola and not the police commission on personnel matters. Town Manager Maria Capriola has used the town attorney's opinion to take control of the police department. As a result of these opinions, Jim Fleming resigned from the police commission and it appears that more resignations might be forthcoming. The police commission approved the hiring of Chief Bolter, discredited the others with an alleged smear campaign. It was the police commission that approved the firing of Sergeant Trombley on rumors with questioning that led to a perjury trap on a rumor about Chief Bolter's statement about wishing some officers would leave were recorded. Chief Bolter never admitted to saying those statements. This is the link to the brief filed by attorney Jeff Ment to the labor board. Uh, and there's a link to uh, that, that uh, uh, filing. Recently, the police commission announced that uh, Chris Davis was selected to assume the position of deputy chief. Chris Davis was a captain in the Manchester Police Department and is presently deputy chief in the East Hartford Police Department. A lawsuit that was filed in Superior Court on September 14th, 2020, uh, Courtney uh, Dissolette versus the East Hartford Police Officers Association. The complaint states that this is a case about institutional and systemic misogyny and uh, gender bias, harassment and discrimination perpetuated um, by the uh, defendant East Hartford Police Officers Association and its male leadership and membership against the plaintiff, a female police officer employed by the town of East Hartford. This was related to a promotional exam for sergeant. Um, and there's a link uh, for the civil case as well for this in the document. The allegations in the lawsuit appear to be those of a dysfunctional police department with an institutional culture of harassment, gender bias, bullying, and a toxic work environment. Recently, I reviewed the 360 survey distributed to employees of the town to evaluate the work environment. Several employees answered unfavorably to several questions, resolved conflict constructively, adapts methods and approaches to the motivations of others, settles differences while preserving relationships, facilitates win-win agreements between parties, 
handles criticism and rejection from others with objectivity, encourages innovation and supports employees who take a risk to propose or implement new ideas that are in keeping with the company's goals and values, encourages members to express disagreement and contribute to a solution, explains rationale for necessary change in direction, makes a point of celebrating superior team accomplishments, treats people with fairness and respects and respect regardless of their power or influence, resolves conflict constructively. Has the board of selectmen reviewed these responses and questioned town manager Maria Capriola on the survey evaluations? Town manager Maria Caparola has been described as vindictive, retaliatory, and manipulative with her interaction with staff. It appears that town manager Maria Caparola is micromanaging the staff. There were claims of a hostile work environment. How can the Board of Selectmen have a total disconnect with evaluating town manager Maria Caparola? Recently, there was a presentation from the Economic Development Committee on their goals and accomplishments. The Economic Development Committee appears to have accomplished nothing and has taken on the role of our planning staff Main Street Partnership in the Chamber of Commerce. Many of these tasks, their tasks are redundant. They have not increased our mill rate with new business or any innovative projects. Has anyone reviewed the need for Economic Development Commission? The town has submitted the Simsbury Farms master plan without any acknowledgement that the golf course is a major asset at Simsbury Farms. Simsbury Farms has operated the right for many years, having the taxpayers pay for poor management. The golf course's restaurant contract is being reviewed, and there is nothing in agreement for the town manager's pay, and excuse me, and the manager to pay for all electricity at the restaurant. There should be a separate electric line for the restaurant. All of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch, Twitter at Joan Co, and Facebook. Okay, thanks, Sean. This next email uh, and final email tonight is from Maria Ecke. And I'm going to be picking up from uh, where I left off uh, at our last meeting. It was a, a rather lengthy email that took us beyond the five minutes. So I'm going to pick up uh, in the middle. Why didn't the community social worker help me with a matter that was clearly social services related and yell at me? for no reason when all I did was ask her coworker a simple question that was totally a social service matter. She embarrassed herself, never mind her coworker. I think you should look into if Kristen Formanak has enough patience to do this type of personal one-on-one -on -one social interaction. I'd written a formal letter to the Department of Social Services to ask about the legal ramifications of an action that I had taken with the Department of Social Services in Hartford. My previous mistake has ramifications to date, and I may want to pay the state back in the future with an amount of $102.90, which they forwarded to Medicare on my behalf. I did not want the state taking away anything when I die. That is why I wanted the written answer from social services in Hartford. I canceled the help from the state prior to August 1st, 2018. I wanted all of the benefits to end and not be ongoing. Why couldn't Simsbury Social Services help me? I'm guessing the answer to my letter from Social Services Legal Department in Hartford is negative since Mr. Alvin Wilson, Legislative and Regulation Division, only called me when I did not give him permission to call only write to me, but Charlotte from Simsbury Social Services actually gave him my telephone number without my permission. Now Connecticut's Congresswoman is helping with the Social Security portion now so there is no need for the town's help, but I would like to know how you address my interaction with the social services director <laughs> and other Simsbury social services personnel. Seven, I would like to view a 2018 and possibly photocopy at my expense, a recent copy of the senior communicator, which states that the senior center will make free copies for seniors. There are no senior communicator copies online from August, 2016 to November, 2018. Eight, why did Kristen Formanek deny me uh, photocopying services when the senior communicator did not specify what type of copies were forbidden? It only stated that the senior center would make free copies for seniors. This interaction happened in front of a community services police officer on Friday, March 10th, 2019. It embarrassed me in front of the entire senior center, Kathy and Dana who worked there and Linda, a volunteer, never mind uh, uh, police officer, um, Lassard, badge number 234, incidentally has really upset me. Officer Lassard even told me to get counseling. Nine, may I have a free copy that Simsbury Police Internal Report dated March 8th, 2019? Nine, did Kristen Formanek begin with the ending salary that the former community social worker received or is her salary even higher? What was the formal social worker's exact ending salary? I will look at the document at town hall. Thank you, Maria Ecke. This is another uh, email starting um, from March uh, 2nd, 2019. 
and it reads, to the beautiful residents of Simsbury. Does it seem reasonable or suspicious that our new town manager, Maria Capriola, would be evaluated on her performance and given a $2,500 raise to equal a salary of $155,000 at 7.30 a.m. on Valentine's Day by a personnel subcommittee consisting of a paid Democratic first selectman, Chair Eric Wellman, a unpaid deputy selectman, Chris Kelly, and an unpaid Republican selectman, Sean Askham, without even asking us, the taxpayers, the only raise we should consider is the raise of suspicion that something does not smell right in Denmark, or should we say Simsbury. In my opinion, it seems sneaky and unnecessary. In addition, my questions from the February 25th meeting were not answered concerning, concerning Eric Wellman's hours and possible starting salary of $10,000. Aren't our hired and elected town officials aware that Connecticut is third in line of the 50 states for losing the most of its residents? People are leaving and going to where they can find a better way of life and taxation. Why weren't my previous questions from the town meeting answered in a timely fashion? Why is there a need of an additional social worker? This is a town salary that we don't need and it would save the town money. But in turn, of course, the more employees you have, the more salary you can make. Once again, Maria Capriola would get another raise. Being a professional librarian myself, as far as the library is concerned, there is no need for a business librarian at all. Another $69,850 saved. Our reference department in Simsbury Public Library does an excellent job. Why not give the first line of defense our reference librarians a raise, not library director Lisa Kareem? Why are all the deep water wind meetings and executive session? How much money is the town getting from deep water wind or indirectly the national power grid for use of our land? What are the long-term effects of the solar panels on our land? I believe there are no studies on that to date. I do know that the windmills which deep water wind uses are loud and a deterrent to both neighbors and wildlife. Property values go down and wildlife scatters. So it's been a little over five minutes, so I'm going to um, pause there and, uh, and, and pick it up again uh, at our next meeting. Um, do we have uh, any uh, in-person uh, public comment? I see um, uh, Jenna Caulfield, uh, who's a member of our uh, police commission, is with us. Hi, Jenna. Hello. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. Um, I am a member of our Simsbury Police Commission and I'm speaking here tonight as its representative. I'm here to address uh, agenda item F, the proposed memorandum of understanding between the town police commission and town manager. But before I get to that, um, I just wanted to say thank you to this board for adding the body cam funding so quickly um, to your agenda. The police department has wanted body cams for quite some time. So the police commission really appreciates this board addressing it so quickly. Um, but back to the memorandum of understanding. As you all might recall, on January 22nd, 2020, uh, the Simsbury Police Commission wrote to you requesting that you appoint impartial outside counsel to review the town charter, the town code, and the Connecticut general statutes to clarify the town manager's role and authority concerning the police department policies and personnel, budgetary, and collective bargaining matters. Uh, the town attorney was then a task, tasked with this. We now have the draft MOU and the police commission has reviewed the changes. And while we feel it was well done, we cannot approve it as it stands. The police commission sent our concerns to our liaison, Sean Askham. And in fact, I spoke with him today earlier. Um, he suggested I reach out to attorney DiCrescenzo. I unfortunately just didn't have time this afternoon to do that. But as I shared with Sean, the commission's concerns uh, are as follows. The new paragraph, paragraph eight, sets a term limit for the memorandum of understanding. This is unacceptable. Uh, the entire purpose of this memorandum has been to eliminate the problems experienced when Simsbury changed its <clears throat> form of government. By adding a term limit, you're just opening the door for these same problems to reoccur later on. It's just basically kicking the can down the road. If changes need to be made, they should be done through the charter revision process. Uh, in addition, paragraph 2C was deleted and language was added in paragraph four. The commission requests that language that limits the ability of the town to change police department policies, departmental rules and regulations, personnel rules and policies, or collective bargaining agreements 
that are applicable to the police department without the approval of the police commission. The police commission should also be advised in advance of proposed adoptions of new or changes to any existing organization-wide policies that are prepared by the town manager or the board of selectmen if they're applicable to the police department. And lastly, the police commission requests that all the typographical and gra grammatical errors get cleaned up. So uh, the police commission is asking that you consider our comments and you make these recommended changes and then approve the MOU. Uh, we're so close and we really appreciate your help in getting it done. Anna, thanks for uh, joining our meeting tonight. And, uh, and we appreciate all that the police commission does to serve our town as well. Thank you. Okay, is there any other uh, public comment uh, from members who joined our meeting tonight? No, we're good? Okay. Uh, we're gonna move on then to the first selectman's report. Just a reminder uh, that Halloween is just uh, several days away and we continue to receive questions about how uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic will impact traditional activities uh, this week. Uh, the town has received guidance from the Farmington Valley Health District, the Connecticut Department of Public Health, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. All of those agencies are discouraging door-to-door -door trick or treating. Instead, residents are encouraged to focus on activities that maintain social distancing and follow face covering rules, such as virtual celebrations, uh, drive-through events, such as the one that, that was organized uh, uh, in partnership with the town, or other events that are held outdoors. I wanted to remind our residents that the deadline to register to vote in the upcoming general election is tomorrow, Tuesday, October 22nd, 27th, 2020. There is a seven day registration blackout period before the election. If you do miss tomorrow's deadline, you may register and vote um, and vote by personally appearing at our town's designated election day voter registration station. And in our case, that's at our library. Uh, proof of identity and residence is required. You can find many answers to questions about the upcoming election by visiting the Registrar of Voters page on the town website. From that page, you can confirm whether you're registered to vote, you can confirm your polling location, you can uh, see a sample ballot and more. Um, if you have uh, questions regarding absentee voting, you can reach out to the town clerk's office. Their number is 860-658-3243. Um, for any other election related questions, you can reach out to one of our registrars and their number can be found on the town website. Some updates from our planning department. I'd like to officially welcome Big Y to Simsbury. Construction on the supermarket on the north side of town is complete and the store is open for business. Also the planning commission will be holding a public uh, workshop concerning the development of an affordable housing plan for Simsbury. This is in the context of uh, Connecticut General Statute 8-30J. Uh, uh, that meeting will be taking place tomorrow, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Details are posted with the commission agenda on how anyone interested can participate in the virtual workshop. Again, that's with the planning commission. The Historic District Commission is planning to hold a public workshop on November 12th at 7 p.m. The intent of that workshop is to discuss updating the district's handbook. Anyone interested is encouraged to attend. Information will be provided with that meeting's agenda on how you can participate. Lastly, I invite you to join the Spirit Council for their next monthly Let's Talk conversation, Thursday, November 5th at 6.30 p.m. November's topic is National Indigenous People Month. Each month, the Spirit Council organizes a panel discussion and a community conversation focused on diversity and inclusion. They're all virtual events and you must pre-register to get the link and you can sign up on the library's website. Let me turn it over now to Maria Capriola who has the uh, uh, town manager's report. Good evening, thanks, Eric. So I have a few updates for you under our coronavirus update. The Department of Public Health has launched a weekly municipal level COVID-19 alert system. Um, if a community is experiencing cases in excess of 15 per day per 100,000 residents, um, they will be placed on a red alert status. So we are monitoring that website. Um, and in addition, the governor has also recently issued an executive order that does allow for municipal CEOs to roll back to phase two guidelines 
um, in the event that a community reaches that red alert status. If that were to happen um, to us, I would certainly be in touch with our public health officials at the Farmington Valley Health District and other key stakeholders um, in regards to reverting back to phase two guidelines. So that, again, is something that we will be watching closely. Uh, there are some communities, I believe, out in the eastern part of the state that have recently um, reached red alert status that uh, did opt to revert back to phase two guidelines. Uh, another item I wanted to just point out um, is that uh, next week, uh, November 2nd and November 4th, um, Town Hall will be closed um, for uh, walk-in visitors. Um, and that is due to Town Hall serving as a hub for the general election. Um, so again, that will only be uh, next Monday and Wednesday. Um, we will be open for walk-in visitors next Friday. All right, I'm going to move on to uh, Board of Selectmen business and uh, would ask this evening for the Board of Selectmen to consider adding an agenda item entitled Body Worn Recording Equipment Reimbursement Grant. Um, I'd recommend that we add that to the agenda this evening following the DOT Distracted Driving Grant. Um, we do have an opportunity to apply for reimbursement through a program uh, that's administered by OPM for the body cameras that we will be purchasing. Those funds have been awarded on a first come first serve basis. That particular program has been in effect for some time. Uh, we were alerted by OPM today that the funds in that program are really beginning to dwindle. Um, and we certainly wanna be able to take advantage of the anticipated $40,000. Um, the next round of funding, the next iteration of this program, um, the amount that we would be eligible for would decrease considerably. So we wanna to try to get in under the old program. Um, I do apologize for the lateness in submitting the item, but we have, uh, uploaded the materials online. So the packet has been updated online. And some items under department news and notes, first from the finance department. Um, they were recently awarded the Excellence in Financial Reporting Award for our CAFR uh, that com was completed for June 30th of 2019. So I wanna congratulate Amy and her team for their very good work on that. Um, some more good news from our finance department. This one in particular, I'm really just quite excited about. Um, but the superintendent and I did take advantage of the final 90-day extension under our temporary shared financial management services agreement that will take us nearly to the end of the calendar year. Um, but we've been very pleased uh, with the arrangement. I think it's been beneficial to both the town and the Board of Education. Um, and we do have an interest and are amenable to sharing financial management services on a more permanent basis. Um, so we will be working on a proposal um, that I will bring first to the personnel subcommittee um, and then ultimately to the full board of Blackman for review and consideration. From our police department, we'd like to welcome our new deputy chief, Chris Davis. Uh, he took the oath of office and actually began his position today, October 26. A uh, bit of background on, on deputy chief Davis. He earned his bachelor's degree from Eastern Connecticut State University. He also has a master's degree from Boston University. Uh, he has been an adjunct professor since 2010, teaching various classes at Eastern, as well as Manchester Community College. He spent uh, 25 years of his career working for the town of Manchester, Connecticut, ultimately rising to the rank of captain there. Um, in Manchester, the way they're structured, um, that position does fill in as the acting chief when needed. Um, he had a, just a great career there, lots of really good experiences um, that we think will bring a lot of value to, to his time and, and his work with us here. Um, most recently, he served as a deputy chief for the East Hartford Police Department. Uh, there, he was responsible for professional standards, um, which included accreditation, training, internal affairs, recruitment and hiring, planning, and special projects. So again, areas of expertise that will really add value to our work here. Uh, we are hoping to do a bit of a formal ceremony for him. Uh, we think in large part it will be virtual, um, but that is something we're working on. And once we have that information, we'll be sure to share it with the Board of Selectmen. From our Public Works Department, um, this is again, it's a night of good, good news. So we had a record turnout for our recent Household Hazardous Waste Collection event. We had over a thousand people participate, a thousand households, sorry, participate. So really incredible. Um, and just really proud of the public works staff. I think they did a terrific job organizing the event, staffing it, coordinating it um, with the help of our contractor. Um, so again, very, very successful event. 
Uh, we have some information on leaf collection um, that is included in the manager's report um, that will begin on November 16th and run through November 27th. Um, we ask residents to please um, use biodegradable bags um, when you are packing up your leaves to please do not use plastic bags. Um, residents can also bring bag leaves to the transfer station during those normal hours of operation. And to find out when DPW crews will be in your neighborhood, we've provided a link in the report and you can click on that and look up your street and find out when public works will be in your neighborhood for leaf collection. We have some additional updates from social services um, listed here that we've spoken to previously. And then lastly, um, just from the town manager's office, I did wanna provide a very quick update that uh, key members of our emergency management team and Eric, we were able to meet with Eversource earlier this month um, to express our concerns regarding their response to uh, Storm East IAS. Um, we also um, had an opportunity to discuss this at the public safety subcommittee meeting uh, that we held a few weeks ago. So folks who are interested in learning more about the topic, I would definitely encourage you to check out that link. But in particular, we emphasized our concern of um, really what was just an unacceptable amount of time to do what we call make safe work in our neighborhood. So make safe work is when we have a neighborhood that is truly trapped off and uh, trapped and um, is really cut off in terms of um, public safety vehicles be able to get in or out, or even just the residents from being able to safely get in and out of their neighborhood due to downed wires that could potentially be live. Um, and again, the response time for the make safe work was just truly unacceptable in our opinion. And so we had a lot of conversation around that and how our source could improve upon that in the future. Um, we also talked, um, Quite a bit about our frustration with the lack of um, information that we received during the storm event, um, not only for the make safe work, but the restoration work as well. And then the uh, challenges that posed for um, town response, as well as the challenges it posed for our residents. Um, we have also relayed those concerns to COST, which is the Council of Small Towns. Um, they are working on behalf of their member towns on this particular issue at the moment as well. Um, so I think our work continues and we do hope to see some improvements from Eversource in the future. And that concludes my report for this evening. All right, thanks, Maria. Uh, I wanted to see if there um, would be support for amending the agenda tonight. This would be adding an item as item C under Selectman Action, Body Worn Recording Equipment Reimbursement Grant. I'll make a motion for that. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so we'll add that to the agenda as item C. Uh, moving into selectman action, uh, item A is tax refund requests. Is there a motion effective October 26th, 2020 to approve the presented tax refunds in the amount of $5,586.76 ,5 and to authorize town manager Maria Capriola to execute the tax refunds. So moved. Second. I second it. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Jackie got in under the wire there. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, item uh, B is the 2021 Click It or Ticket Enforcement Grant. The police department has the opportunity to apply for a state grant to conduct dedicated safety belt enforcement patrols. Uh, this would pay for overtime for officers, providing an additional 90 hours of uh, roadway safety efforts at no cost to the town. I wanted to see if there was anything uh, staff wanted to add or any questions from the board on this item. I have some questions, a couple questions. Sure, is Wendy. this an annual thing? Or is it just, yeah, that's my first question. Yeah, oftentimes the um, distracted driving grant um, is annual. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that we've, we've had the opportunity to do on a number of occasions. Okay, and uh, my first impression was, <laughs> is that, you know, the, it's all, it's going to be like during the Thanksgiving period that we're going to have extra people out monitoring people for seatbelt violations, which... I, you might, I don't know if you're shaking your head because that's good, but it's also not a welcoming thing. And I don't know how much of an issue is seatbelts in the town. Like, is, is that like something that we stop a lot of people for, for not wearing seatbelts? I, 
just asking that question. Sorry, Sorry, I was on mute. Sorry about that. Um, I can follow up with the chief for some stats on that. I mean, traditionally, whether it's welcoming or not, if somebody doesn't wear their seatbelt and get into an accident, it's a bad thing. So I get that. Oh, no, I totally get that. I'm just saying it's just to have extra force out over the holiday weekend. Perfect time to do it. Okay. You got people home from school. You got other people in town. It's uh, I think our officers do an outstanding job of, of greeting folks, even in a tough situation of I mean, people enjoy being pulled over by Gary Gray because he's the nicest guy in the world when he pulls you over. So um, not that I've had that experience, but uh, I think Chris Peterson has. But, uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, uh, again, I. Uh, OK, I just it was just my first important. impression. That was all I just had to say it. Yeah, I mean, they do they do DUI checkpoints on New Year's Eve intentionally in, in towns, too, for the, the same yeah. reason, as, you know, you can get around. Um, it so. okay, okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Eric, sorry, just quickly. I realized I just referred to it as the distracted driving grant. I apologize. That was our last meeting. This was the click it or ticket grant. I, I apologize for that. Oh, no problem. I didn't even catch that. Is there a motion effective October 26, 2020 to submit the 2021 click it or ticket enforcement grant application and authorize Maria Capriola to execute the grant application? And further to that, one second. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's the um, the uh, grant, uh, should it be awarded? I'm going to do it just because I asked all the crazy questions. So, so moved. Thanks, Wendy. Second. Any further conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That motion carries. Um, this is the item. Uh, item C is the one uh, we just added to the agenda. This is an opportunity to apply for a grant for body worn recording equipment. Um, Maria, we obviously this was uh, added at the last minute. Great opportunity for the town to uh, take advantage of this money. Could you just give a little bit of an overview since we haven't had a chance to review this one? Sure. Um, again, just sort of elaborating um, on what I spoke to during the town manager's report. So this particular uh, grant opportunity, we estimate would provide a reimbursement to us of about $40,000. Um, as you know, we were planning to purchase our body cameras um, with the full expense being borne by the town. Um, with this particular opportunity, it would cover about half of the cost for the first year of our body cameras, the acquisition and, and maintenance fees. So again, um, that's great, great for us. Um, it's essentially $40,000 back to us that we were planning to spend and had allocated um, using town funds. Um, again, as I mentioned, um, we are anticipating that the state will have another round of this funding. Um, but the funding model will be a little different. It, it'll go from 50% to 30%. And so we'd really like to try to take advantage of this sort of older uh, pot of money that was available and appreciate, um, you know, the state folks reaching out to us and letting us know um, that those funds were, were beginning to get low. Again, they knew that we were working on this project and it was something that we were pursuing. Um, so again, we'd just really like to try to, to take advantage of the program while the reimbursement's at the 50% level. Great. Were there any questions for Maria on this item? <laughs> I had a question. Wendy. No, I'm pretty chatty tonight. Um, so when we approved that a, a while ago, we were taking that money out of, wasn't it coming from the private duty fund, if I recall correctly? So will this reimbursement go just into the private duty fund if we get the $40,000? So it will cover the purchase cost. Um, in terms of the accounting of which revenue fund, I can I can just check with Amy on that. Okay, because if, if right, that's where it's coming from. So if we get money back, it should go back in there. That's what I would assume. We'll probably have to transfer it though. Don't all reimbursements come into the general fund, Maria? Generally, so, and then typically, and then they'll go to whichever fund. So um, we would have to actual, take it back out. Yeah, exactly right. So the actual purchase will come from the CNR fund. Um, so what would have happened is essentially that the private duty funds would have been transferred to capital and then to CNR. Um, and so the expense will be charged against the CNR fund. So ultimately, it will most likely get, um, if you will, the reimbursement will go to the CNR fund, but it would essentially offset the revenue that we would have been taking out of the, the private duty um, fund. But I can just confirm that with you. Yeah, I just want to make sure, it's, yeah, it's not, it, it's evens out somehow. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Were there any other questions? Is there a motion effective October 26, 2020 to submit the body worn recording equipment reimbursement grant application and authorize Maria Capriola, town manager, to execute the grant application 
and uh, to uh, accept the grant award um, should, uh, should it be awarded. Moved. Second. Second. Is there any further conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Great, thank you. <laughs> Item uh, D is a supplemental appropriation for the ice rink refrigeration condensing unit replacement. Um, for this item, management is requesting a transfer of $13,000 from the Capital Reserve Fund to cover costs associated with the replacement of the, refri re the refrigeration condensing unit at the ice rink. In the course of replacing the unit, it was discovered that the existing steel supporting the unit is in poor condition and also needs to be replaced. There's a picture in the packet uh, showing the corrosion in the support structure. Um, Maria, is there anything that you wanted to add in the way of context before I see if there's questions? Sure, thanks, Eric. Um, so as you can see from the picture, when we removed the condensing unit underneath, um, there was a portion of the steel beam that was actually quite rotted and deteriorated, and there is an actual piece of the beam that's missing. So we did include that in your packet um, for you this evening. Um, in order to um, ensure that we would be able to open the rink on time and due to the fact that the new condensing unit could not be placed onto the deteriorated steel beam, uh, we did go ahead and authorize that work under the emergency provisions that were able to do so. Um, in terms of moving forward for funding that work, um, we're very appreciative. Um, the Board of Finance did move forward with the recommendation to take year-end savings and place some of those year-end savings into the capital reserve. Um, I know we've been talking about how important it is to have the capital reserve in part for those emergency circumstances that we can't truly anticipate. Um, so staff's recommendation would be to um, cover the cost of um, the steel beam by making a recommendation to the Board of Finance to transfer funds um, from the capital reserve to uh, the capital fund for this particular project. Okay, other uh, questions from Maria? Okay. Is there a motion effective October 26, 2020 to recommend to the Board of Finance a transfer of $13,000 from the Capital Reserve Fund to the Capital Projects Fund to cover the cost of replacing steel supports for the ice rink condensing unit? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, anyone opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Item E is, uh, is an assistant uh, town clerk one and two uh, job classification. This item was previously reviewed by the personnel subcommittee. Uh, these are revised job descriptions for the town clerk one and, and two positions, which were last updated more than 20 years ago, and also recommended salary ranges. And there are a couple of substantive changes uh, to each job description. And I just wanted to ask Maria just to highlight what those are. Great, thank you, Eric. Um, and then just another piece of background I wanna to offer to folks is that we do have an upcoming retirement in that office. Um, so that really prompted us to take a good look at, again, the job descriptions, the existing um, compensation for the positions. It's again, when we have folks retiring, it's just a really good opportunity um, for us to do some housekeeping, particularly as Eric mentioned, you know, the job descriptions um, the two assistant clerk job descriptions haven't been updated since the late 1990s, and so much has changed since then. Um, so again, the, um, the updates for the job descriptions are largely housekeeping. Uh, however, we did have uh, one substantive update to each of the two job descriptions. Um, so for the assistant town clerk two job description, um, we changed that the municipal um, uh, clerk certification is a requirement of that position. That is a higher level position within the office. Um, we did feel that it was very reasonable um, for somebody at the assistant clerk uh, two level to be certified um, as a municipal clerk. Um, that is a process that typically takes at least three years. So it is a rather vigorous um, and lengthy process. Um, but again, felt that making that a requirement of that particular position was uh, also just a responsible thing to do for that office. It is an office of only three people. So when our town clerk is not there, particularly for short periods of time, whether it's you know vacation, perhaps an illness, um, that we really do need that person to oversee the office um, during those periods of time. 
For the assistant town clerk one position, that particular position is more of an entry level position. Um, it can also be held by a person who has never worked in a municipal clerk's office, but has transferable skills. Um, and so, um, but again, once somebody has spent a considerable amount of time in that position and has obtained their certification as a municipal certified clerk, they really do possess all the skills and knowledge of an assistant town clerk too. So the one substantive change would be that when that occurs, the person in that position would be reclassified to an assistant town clerk two position. So those are really the only two substantive changes. Um, we did have an opportunity to review this proposal, uh, the comprehensive proposal with the union. Um, that particular group is represented by CSCA. It is the Secretarial Clerical and Library Group, and they are in concurrence with what we have proposed. Okay, thank you. Were there questions for me? I have a question. Sure, Wendy. I was part of a conversation on personnel, but but I'm thinking about this again, um, just to bring it up. So you have the town clerk one, town clerk two, the town clerk two is at a higher salary grade or level. Um, what we're saying is if the town clerk one meets all the requirements for the town clerk two level, it sounds like they're automatically a town clerk two. And I was just wondering, is there any um, like a performance appraisal or anything like that, that shows just because they have the credentials, they may not be great in the job and that they you know, there should be something else than just an automatic pass to the next level. Um, so this was kind of bothering me. So I thought I'd just put that out there. Sure. So we have um, right now, we currently um, do require employees in new positions um, or when an employee is promoted, um, they do go through a probationary period. So again, it's a new hire or an existing hire who's promoted. Um, something that we've really tightened up over the last few years is that we do require a formal review of an employee um, that a supervisor must complete, um, recommending whether or not that person should, should be removed from probation. So um, again, the department head has to sign off on that recommendation. That recommendation comes to my office. Um, I personally review all of, of those probationary reviews. Um, and if I am in concurrence with the department head's recommendation, we will then um, remove the person from probation at that time. Okay. And I just remembered Sean saying, I was looking at this more corporate wise, whereas it's just a different with the unions and, and um, municipal employees, it's a different um, animal. So, yeah. Yeah. Said, said less diplomatically in a union environment. We have no choice for uh, Wendy. Less flexibility. <laughs> that's, that's the trade off that people don't understand in, in the union space versus the rest of the world that we deal in. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Is there a motion effective October 26th, 2020 to revise the assistant town clerk two and assistant town clerk one job descriptions as presented and further to approve a salary range for the assistant town clerk two position at grade T10 of the SC and L employees pay plan or $29 and 20 cents to $34 and 90 cents an hour or the equivalent of $53,144 to $63,518 per year, and approve a salary range for the assistant town clerk one position at grade T7 of the SC and L employees pay plan, or $25.62 to $30.59 an hour, or the equivalent of $46,628 to $55,673 per year. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, item F is a proposed settlement agreement for MPP 34133. Um, this was brought by the union related to our accountant position. And Maria, I'm, I'll ask you again just to provide some uh, brief background on, on what this settlement calls for. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, so a couple of key elements of this uh, potential settlement is that one, the union is agreeing to um, what the town proposed for the accountant position in terms of the updates to the job description. You may recall the position had been vacant since about 2013. And so we had proposed updating the job description. They have agreed to our proposals on that. Um, we also uh, proposed that the position would be 40 hours a week 
Um, all of the uh, positions in the accounting division of the finance department are 40 hours a week. So again, this is part of that team. We felt that was very appropriate. They did agree to that as well. Um, they also agreed to the compensation for the position uh, that the town had proposed. So this is just confirming that they are in fact in agreement on hours of work, compensation, and job description. The second piece, which is a really neat opportunity, is um, as you know, um, something I had been advocating for for some time was a um, organization-wide classification and compensation um, plan and update. Um, I know we didn't get funding for that, so we're just doing our best little by little to try and do classification plan cleanup as we can. So we do have an opportunity for the A1 pay grade and the AMP bargaining unit to appropriately um, do what's called the B schedule. And the B schedule is for employees in that class, excuse me, employees in that pay grade who work 40 hours a week. So this is an opportunity to revert two positions back to their appropriate pay grade of A1, but on the B schedule. Um, in order to appropriately slot those two uh, incumbents, um, there is about a 10 cent per hour increase. I think for the current fiscal year, it's about $170 um, impact per person. Um, but again, I'm, I'm really um, pleased about the opportunity to um, sort of adjust uh, that pay grade really appropriately. Um, so I think that this is overall a really good outcome for the town. Thanks for the summary, Maria. Um, did anyone have any follow-up questions? Is there a motion effective October 26, 2020 to approve the settlement agreement related to claims brought by CSEA and MPP 34133? Second. Is there any further conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Item G is a proposed memorandum of understanding between the town, police commission, and the town manager. Um, so, you'll, you know, in your packets tonight is a proposed memorandum. And, um, you know, the, the purpose of the MOU is to clearly define the roles and responsibilities of, of each of these three parties as it relates to our police department. Our police department is subject to a number of different provisions between state statute, the town charter, code of ordinances. And in the transition to the town manager form of government, we found the need to clarify these roles. Um, I wanted to... Uh, Turn the floor over to Sean and see what context you'd like to add, because as liaison to the police commission, you've done a lot of work on this. Thanks, Eric. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and uh, Attorney DiCrescenzo is here to, to help us as, as well, right, Bob? Um, so uh, I appreciated Jenna's comments. Um, I don't believe the police commission has had a meeting on this, so I, I think she was speaking on behalf of her own thoughts at, at this point, but uh, I have talked to uh, I did talk to one other police commission member, and um, it, it seems like there is um, so some so perhaps some confusion on our intent here. So what I wanted to say very publicly first, um, and and again, uh, thanks for the floor, um, is that our intent here is is to just solidify um, what we believe to be the the uh, the charter language as it's as it's written, um, with the updated role of the town manager uh, to make sure that we're respecting. Um, and, and in, in many cases, enhancing the role of the, the police commission because they play a, a substantial role in, in the management of our police department and have for a long time. Um, we have a unique police commission and then it's not just a citizen complaint review board. Uh, these folks um, have, a, have a sometimes daily uh, and very proactive uh, involvement in the policing of our community and are very much uh, part of the procedures, policy, um, all the important things that happen behind the scenes with our sworn officers, our, our leaders in the police department, et cetera, to, and do contribute, I think, to an outstanding police department. So I just wanted to make sure that, that I set the, the groundwork for that. Um, we, we've got this memorandum of understanding because it, it, it appears that we probably need to, to this is uh, one item and others, maybe go back um, next charter revision and um, uh, put a little bit more time into a couple of places. There was a lot of changes here. I think uh, Attorney DiCrescenzo and the Charter Revision Commission uh, did an outstanding job getting the town manager's role in, um, but we anticipated a, a couple of potential cleanup items here and there, and, and this is, is, is an opportunity uh, if, if, the, up to, if a new Charter Commission um, believes so, uh, to potentially clean things up. So uh, I'll get to the point here, Eric, in that um, if, we, if we work backwards um, from, the, which I think are, are some, honestly, some minor comments uh, from the police commission, but important. And uh, we, you know, this is a memorandum between our board and theirs. 
uh, and the town manager. So the intent of, and if you give, uh, if you'll allow me to work backwards from section eight. Um, so it says uh, term, this memorandum of understanding shall expire on December 6, 2021, unless extended for subsequent two year co-terminus with the term of the board of selectmen elected at the 2021 municipal election. Uh, as I articulated today to, to a police commission member, and, and I'll say tonight, uh, the intent of this is, as we talked about it, is, is to make it clear uh, to the police commission that the board of selectmen takes this document seriously, and we wanted future boards to proactively review it. For us not to do this tonight, stick it on a shelf, um, and then everybody go back uh, to the way it was. That, that again, this was an important issue. We were entering into an agreement here. We wanted it uh, to outlive the six of us and the, the current <clears throat> members of the police commission so that there was a clear operating agreement uh, moving forward. Um, I can appreciate why the police commission is concerned. Um, so I am suggesting this evening, uh, and Bob, if you can help me draft on the fly, um, something along the lines of this memorandum of understanding shall remain in effect, but must be reviewed every two years by the incoming board of selectmen at their organizational meeting um, and whatever it is. But basically it remains in full force and effect unless the board of selectmen um, changes it, but they are required to review it at that meeting, much like we're required to decide whether we're going to reappoint town attorney, pension council, et cetera. That was, I believe, really what our intent was. Um, and it's not to have this run dry at the end of the two-year period, and then we go do this again. Um, it was to hold everybody accountable, I thought, to, to make sure that we took this document seriously and that future boards were aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. Again, yeah, and, and if my team will indulge me. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, you could also add typical language that if the board of selectmen does not review within 30 days, it's automatically readopted as is. Thank you. Yeah, that 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 works as well, whatever it is. And again, I appreciate you know your advice here. But our I believe I'm speaking on behalf of all six of us. Our intent is for this to outlive our current term. We are just trying to make it important um, and a focal point for future boards to review it and understand that this agreement's in place so that we don't have to go back and rehash this and get legal opinions and, and do this again, essentially. Sean, I support that small change, and I also think it's important that it, it does get in front of us every two years so that we're thinking and conscious about our roles and the process. Absolutely. And then um, there was questions around paragraphs uh, 2C and 4. So in the spirit of continuing to work backwards, we'll deal with 4 first. So the police department policies, um, there is uh, confusion. Um, this surrounds... Uh, also charged in uh, rules and procedures, the town manager will prepare, authorize for, to the police department, including, but so the intent here, and again, um, Bob, you can help me, is is we are in no way stepping on, nor can we step on the police commission's right and authority to set departmental procedures. All we're inserting here is that the overarching policies of the town, for example, the anti-discrimination policy, um, when we approve it, when the town manager manages it, is in full force and effect for every employee in the town of Simsbury. Is that right. is that correct? Anti-discrimination, sexual harassment, um, uh, social media policy. I mean, it, there's so many of them now, and and they apply to everybody across the board. Um, you know, holiday schedule. Um, it, the, the intent of paragraph four was that of those policies that are not specific to the police department are within the purview of the town manager. Those policies that are specific to the police department are exclusively governed by the police commission, by charter and by ordinance. So I, I just think we have to find language that uh, expresses that uh, more clearly. It was yeah. never the intent of, of this language to take anything away from the police commission or to invade upon their their exclusive jurisdiction over the policies of the police department but you know even the even the code of ethics uh the the ethics forms and you know that applies to everybody and uh, the police commission wouldn't have the authority to say well we're not going to have it applied to the police department for instance it's sort of these overarching Townwide policies is what paragraph four is talking about. Um, 
So, and, and again, I think, again, the way that's, I understood it, we're, we're sitting here recorded, this is on TV. So again, the intent, I believe of the six of us through the town attorney's advice is, is exactly what the charter says. And in no way, as, as you just said, Bob, is infringing upon or trying to take away the police commission's uh, authority. Right. Um, and then if I could also just point, and this, this applies to everything, um, an important language in here and, and the, at the root of all this is really communication, right? That's what we've been talking about and making sure that now that we have three parties involved, um, it's really important that with the daily life of the town manager managing the town, the police commission managing the police department with the chief, the six of us meeting every two weeks, subcommittees, et cetera, there's a lot of opportunity for miscommunication or, or not communicating. Um, so we've officially, we're gonna be appointing um, the deputy town manager. So Melissa, thank you. Uh, to work with the police commission on on basically anything that that comes up that's related to the police department. So, example today, um, town town manager, town staff did a great job getting the the, the uh, click it or ticket item on the agenda, giving the police commission a heads up that that was coming in. Those are the sorts of things. Again, we always intend to do that, but again, just um, formalizing and memorializing that that is a, a, a very simple example of the communication. But what this board is committing to, to make sure that the police commission has the information they feel they need, not only to make decisions, um, but to respect their authority as well as as, as they work through their, their their powers on the charter. Yeah, what um, might help clarify paragraph four as I'm thinking about this is, you know, in a lot of contracts you see specific examples of the type of policy in this case mm -hmm. that the paragraph is referring to. And, you know, those examples could be added. They wouldn't be an exclusive list. But if we define four or five of those, it would it would help define the scope of paragraph four. I think we would, you know, anti-harassment policies and sexual harassment and workplace safety and those type of things. Put together a list of four or five, and you know, interpreting contract language. When you do that, you 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 sort of define the, the, the help define the parameters of the paragraph. If, if you think it would be helpful, I appreciate that, Bob. Um, going back to two, uh, there is no two C. I believe there was a two C in the previous, or is it one C? Uh, let me see. I don't have it. Uh... Yeah, I'm reading the comments that I that I got, and and Jenna, if you're still on, the question was around. I thought two C. It does say paragraph 2C. Yeah, there there was a 2C and it was deleted. Okay. Oh, yes, that's it. It was 2C was added by the police commission in their draft. And uh, at your direction, it was deleted. Because it was duplicative, right? Is that, am I remembering that correctly, Bob? It really, it, you had to read 2C and 4 together and, and the this board sort of collapse 2C at the four. That's right. So again, the, the, the intent is in no way, nor can we, per charter, take away the police commission's ability to set department policies and procedures. Um, so we, we, we tried to clarify with, within what we just talked about in four, that all we're talking about is anti-discrimination, sexual harassment, et cetera, overarching town policies. Um, and that we're, you know, this document does not need to reiterate every point in the charter and or statute either, because it would be a hundred pages long, right, Bob? Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't, it would, the intent of this is to clarify roles. If, if, if it gets too specific, it, it takes away from its clarity. Correct. And then 1E, um, just a, a further clarification, and this is around the budgetary times. Again, all, as we talked about, all we mean uh, here is, is this does not include ordinary, um, if we do year end budget transfers. I think that's the intent. Although yeah. sometimes those transfers don't are not at year end, but by and large they're year end transfers. Again, I think I'm generally comfortable as long as my peers are of putting in year end because 99.9% .9 of the time, I think that's when they happen. If there's an exception to it, I have no problem, again, keeping the police commission informed. Um, but again, our intent is in no way to change the funding midterm, nor should we be of an approved budget for the police department, but for 
um, certainly e e extreme circumstances, and it would need more than our authority to do that anyway. Um, it would need ours and the Board of Selectmen's. And again, we would obviously consult with and, and get feedback from the police commission before any such change was made. Yeah. So I, I John, think- were there again, any other proposals? Sorry, go this? Sean, I was just asking, are there any other proposed changes or does that sum it up? Um, just that there was some, some grammatical errors, which I'm not entirely sure of, of where they, 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 they were. Um, or what I those references that is are. because I made the edits and sometimes um, I don't do it very well. <laughs> you do a better job than I do, Bob. English Especially is my third language. And, but I'll go through it and I'll make sure that it's uh, it's uh, in good shape. But actually, my, my secretary is back this week. I'll, I'll probably send it to her and have, get another set of eyes on it to clean up all the grammatical and uh, typographical errors, but we'll get it. We'll get it in good shape. So, given given that, I, I am recommending a change in course uh, with my peer center. If you'll indulge me, is that that if if uh, the six of us are uh, agree with this in principle, that we would ask Bob to finalize these changes, um, and then having it in draft form would, I believe, allow us to to have it go to the police commission uh, for a discussion with Attorney DiCrescenzo. Um, similar to how we, we had our discussion last week to finalize um, any questions that, that may be, and then we could, um, then we would all agree to, to move forward with it. So just a little bit of a pivot uh, from what we'd planned. But again, I, I, um, I think it was important that we got out tonight that the spirit of this is to continue to have, um, and in no way can we take away the authority of the police commission to despite what some folks might be saying out there, uh, it takes a statute and or charter revision to, to change the powers of the police commission, neither of which we have the authority to do unilaterally. Um, so all we're doing is clarifying roles and responsibilities this evening, uh, given that we, you know, we've got a, a, again, a new, a newer form of government that we're still working out some of the communication with. So. And I'll try to get it, get it out tomorrow uh, so that everybody has plenty of time to, to review it. The changes are not, are not that extensive, so I should be able to turn it around. I'll, I'll try to do it tomorrow. Okay, great. Thanks, Bob. So, Sean, I'd be supportive of uh, tabling this item, uh, and uh, that will also have the added benefit of giving the police commission the opportunity to uh, weigh in. Um, so, would, would there be a motion to table? I'll move that. I'll second it. Is there any further conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you guys. And, and Bob, you and I will work together to get this to the police commission. And again, I think it's appropriate that we just have a quick discussion with them to make sure that, that they understand much like I tried to lay out tonight, our line of thinking. Absolutely. Um, so everybody's comfortable with this because again, our intent is very clearly to respect their authority. So. Okay. Thanks guys. Appreciate you indulging me on this again. Thanks for your work. All right, we're moving on to item uh, H. This is the Economic Development Commission work plan. Uh, so the ordinance that created the new EDC calls for uh, us, the Board of Selectmen, to clarify the EDC's work plan each November. At our last meeting, we heard a presentation from the EDC of, of the work that they've uh, done over the past year, things like business outreach, research on business incentives, a refresh of uh, the town's marketing, uh, and developing a, a recommendation on creating some kind of co-working space. Uh, so if there were thoughts tonight on uh, items to add to their work plan, I'd be you know, more than happy to entertain that conversation. But my recommendation for tonight, rather than add anything to their work plan, is that we ask the EDC uh, to continue to make progress on the, uh, on the items that they have. I know at their next meeting, I believe it's later this week, they are going to be having a discussion about any items that they would recommend adding to their work plan. So I'd like to see uh, their recommendation before finalizing their work plan. And I'm also hesitant to add, um, you know, much to their work right now so that they can have adequate focus on, on their existing items. Um, so I, uh, I, I just wanted to um, propose that we, uh, you know, not take action tonight, but certainly in, in November, uh, formalize that. Eric, I'd be in agreement with that. 
Okay, thanks, Jackie. Um, but it, as always, if if any you know if any member has ideas um, for uh, items that we could add to their work plan, um, you know that's something that we could bring up now, um, or certainly at a, a future meeting in November, because we will have to uh, formalize their work plan for the coming year. Okay. Item I is the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, regular meeting schedule for 2021. In your packet are proposed meeting dates. It follows uh, past practices around meeting times and frequency. Uh, so as usual, there would be one regular, uh, regularly scheduled meeting in July and August. There would be two meetings in December, uh, but on the first and the third Mondays of the month, so a little bit different. Um, there would also be two Wednesday meetings, uh, just the way the calendar falls. Uh, one of those would be in April, the other one would be in October. I wanted to see if anyone had any thoughts or concerns after reviewing those dates. Check for the September and October, there's no um, conflict with Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur this time. I um, double checked those myself, we're, <laughs> we're, we're good. <laughs> Okay, is there a motion effective October 26th, 2020 to approve the Board of Selectmen 2021 regular meeting schedule as presented? So moved. So moved. Second. Sean seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. All right, that takes us to appointments and resignations. Uh, one item is a, a couple of resignations from the Aging and Disability Commission. Is there a motion effective October 26, 2020, to accept the resignation of uh, Marvin Koff as a regular member of Aging and Disability? Also, uh, accept the resignation of Arlene, uh, uh, Zip, I hope I'm not mispronouncing her name, uh, Zapil, as an alternate member of the Aging and Disability Commission. Yeah, with our thanks. I'll send it with our thanks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Looking at the minutes from uh, October 14th, 2020, uh, that meeting, did anyone see anything that they uh, would propose change? No, okay. So those will stand. Any uh, subcommittee or liaison reports tonight? I don't have any, um, the Board of Ed is meeting tomorrow, I believe, but I did want to give two shout outs. One was on the um, inequity in housing and education presentation that was last week, I think through the Spirit Council. Um, it was pretty eye opening about the diversity, um, the small amount of diversity that we have in Simsbury. And, um, you know, they talked about fair housing laws and, and things like that, that people are starting to look at in town with the tomorrow's the also, and it's more about inclusion, not necessarily diversity, but allowing other people to come into town um, and making it more affordable. So tomorrow's meeting to hear from the planning commission would be pretty relevant to that. And then the second thing was I got to volunteer at the uh, the um, Halloween thing. I got to work with Melissa and um, I, I was only there for an hour or so, but the town it was just what I saw. The people really seemed to enjoy it. People were really patient. I mean, you were there longer, Melissa, than I was, but um, I just felt really good being there and seeing all the families that had somewhere to go and that were really excited about it. So good job for all the teams involved. Yeah, it's a really nice thing. 2020 has taken a, a lot of our traditions away from us, and it was nice that we were able to um, be part of a new tradition this year. Any other uh, subcommittee reports tonight? Just um, one other thing I just wanted to re-highlight from the Spirit Council, their next community conversation is taking place on Thursday, November 6th. Uh, it's a, a, a Zoom meeting. You can register through the library's website. Uh, the topic in November is National Indigenous People Month. I can't underline how amazing each of these has been. Um, one around um, uh, people with uh, disabilities, um, one around um, Latinx, uh, one around um, uh, African Americans, and each one has been amazing um, in its own way. And I highly recommend 
uh, members of our community um, attend these meetings uh, when they can. Um, you learn a lot, and I've uh, it's it's given me a a perspective into what it's like to walk in in someone else's shoes. Uh, so I wanted to uh, throw that out there to the community and, of course, this board. Okay. Um, was there anything under uh, communication that anyone wanted to raise? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Just a reminder before we go that there is a... Uh, a follow-up conversation on a, a collective bargaining matter uh, that has its own uh, Zoom link. So uh, please, if you're able, uh, join us for that.